Hi again, everybody. This is an answer key for quiz number four for unit four applications of derivatives. All right, and we start off with a Newton's method question again. <coughs> Recall the formula for using Newton's method to solve an equation shown there. Use Newton's method to approximate all real solutions to the equation x cubed plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so that's set equal to 0. It is ready to be solved. Give your answers accurate to the number of decimal places that your calculator will show. There is one answer to find. To find it, start with your first guess as x0 equals negative 0 0.3 and continue from there showing each iteration until the answer appears. Okay, so As a function, it would be f of x is equal to x cubed plus 3x plus 1. <clears throat> f prime of x is going to be 3x squared plus 3. And so if we write the formula for Newton's method, subscript n plus 1 is equal to x subscript n minus f of x n is going to be x n cubed plus 3 x n plus 1. I'm going to put that on top of the fraction in brackets and f prime of x n will be 3 x n squared plus 3. And that will be in brackets on the bottom. And in the calculator, <clears throat> I'll put brackets around the whole fraction as well. All right. And so it starts, it tells us to start off with x0 equals negative 0 0.3. So let's plug that into our formula and see where we get. Okay, there's no trig stuff, so I don't really have to worry about degrees or radians. So I'm going to put negative 0.3 in for xn, so negative 0.3, and then we have to go minus, and then bracket for the whole big fraction, and then bracket on the top, and I'm going to need to have my negative 0.3 in brackets all the time too. So bracket again, negative 0.3 to the power of 3, plus 3 times, I guess may as well do brackets, negative 0.3, plus 1, and we'll close the bracket on the top, divided by, open a bracket for the bottom, 3 times <clears throat> negative 0 0.3 squared. That has to be in brackets. That looks good. Plus 3. Close the bracket for the bottom expression. Close the main bracket for the fraction. Negative 0.322324. What was it? 322, 324. 159. <clears throat> and now let's get x2. So I'm going to go second function, enter, to re-enter that line. And I'm going to replace every negative 0 0.3 that was plugged in there with answer. So we'll go second function, answer delete some of the stuff that's left over. That thing in the cubed needs to be answer, and I will delete the 0, the point, and the 3. And then it's 3 times negative 0 0.3, so I'm going to replace that with answer, delete, delete, delete. Plus 1 stays divided by 3 times negative 0 0.3 squared. I'm going to replace that with answer, delete, delete, delete. Bang. <clears throat> Negative 0 0.322, 185, 3603, and what is x3? Let's go enter again. 
negative 0 0.322. One eight five three five four six. And what is x four? Negative point three two two one eight five three five four six. Hey, that's the same. And so is the next one. <coughs> okay, so x four we end up with the same as x three, so there's our answer. And just to verify, we could do this as a function, go x to the power of 3 plus 3x plus 1. And if we wanted to find the 0, the left bound, be to the left a little bit, right bound. Okay, negative 0.3221854. We have it a little bit more accurate. <coughs> All right, so there's number one, everybody. Number two is that famous question from um, optimization problems. So Jane is three miles offshore in a boat and wis wishes to reach a coastal village ten miles down a straight shoreline from the point nearest the boat. Okay. So this is the shore. Here's Jane in a boat. This is three miles. <clears throat> and she wishes to reach a coastal village 10 miles down a straight shoreline from the point nearest the boat. So the point nearest the boat is here. So there's the point nearest the boat, and so... The village is down here. And this is 10 miles. She can row at three miles per hour and can walk at six miles per hour. Where should she land her boat to reach the village in the least amount of time? So we want to minimize the total time. Distance equals speed times time. So time is distance over speed. And her total time is going to be <clears throat> time rowing plus time walking. Okay, so her total time will be her time for rowing is distance for rowing divided by speed for rowing. And her time for walking will be her distance walking divided by her speed for walking. <clears throat> okay. And so Jane will likely row into here somewhere and then walk the rest of the way, right? Okay, and so we can call this x over here, and since it's 10 miles to the village, this piece would be 10 minus x. And so this would be the distance that she rows, and this would be the distance that she walks.
<clears throat> and so using Pythagoras, the distance that she rose squared is equal to x squared plus 3 squared. And so the distance that she rose is the square root of x squared plus 3 squared, which is x squared plus 9. Okay, so like if I did square root and square root and plus or minus, but then we're going to reject the negative possibility, right? <clears throat> okay, so her total time will be the distance that she rose is the square root of x squared plus 9. And her speed for rowing is she can row at 3 miles per hour, so divided by 3. And the distance that she walks is 10 minus x divided by speed for walking is 6 miles per hour. Okay, so there is our expression for the total time it will take her to get to the village. And x has to be greater than or equal to 0 because she's not going to row away from the village and then walk. And it has to be less than or equal to 10, because she's not going to row out beyond the village and walk back. Okay, so now we have to find the critical points of this time function and test the endpoints and critical points to see which one gives us the least amount of time. So first of all, I'm going to, going to fix this up a little bit, and I'm going to write x squared plus 9. The square root of that would be to the power of 1 half. And if you're dividing by 3, that's equivalent to multiplying by a third. So we can put the 1 third out like that. And I'm going to go 6 into the 10 is 10 over 6. And 6 into the negative x is minus x over 6. You could have it as a negative 1 sixth x if you want. <clears throat> and now we will do t prime. 1 half times 1 third is 1 sixth times x squared plus 9. 1 half minus 1 is negative a half. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. The derivative of 10 over 6 is 0. The derivative of negative one-sixth x is minus one-sixth. Okay, two into six will leave three on the bottom. We've got 1 times x on the top, so x on the top, and then we have a 3 on the bottom, and it would be x squared plus 9 to the positive 1 half on the bottom, so we could just write it as square root of x squared plus 9 <clears throat> minus 1 sixth. Okay, and we want to set this equal to 0 and solve it, right? So what I can do from here is add the 1 sixth over. Let's cross multiply. So you have one fraction equal to another. Divide both sides by 3. So I would get 2x equals the square root of x squared plus 9. Then we can square both sides.
and subtract x squared from both sides, and we would get 3x squared equals 9. which means that x squared is equal to 3. <clears throat> now go square root, square root. x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. And we said that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So the negative square root of 3 is not in the domain. And so we get x equals the square root of 3. There's our critical point. And over here we will test the endpoints and critical points. We want to know what's the time if x was 0, because that was the left end point. What is the time, total time, if x is 10, that was the right end point. And what is her total time if we use the critical point, root 3? Okay, and so what I usually do, guys, is I usually type the time function into a graph and then get those values from the graph. So the time function was the square root of x squared plus 9, all of that divided by 3 plus <clears throat> 10 minus x, over 6 and let's see if we can calculate her time when x is 0 2.6 repeating what is that hours it's in miles and miles per hour and her time when x is 10, 3.48 hours, okay, so what that actually means is that she rose all the way to the village, right, if, if x is 10, then this line would extend like that, and she would row all the way to the village, the first situation, if x is 0, that means just rowing straight to shore and then walking and at the critical point, this means rowing at an angle into the shore just a little bit. And so how long does it take if we use the square root of 3 critical point? X, we get 2.53 hours. So that seems to be the shortest time. And if you want to put that into perspective, 2.6 2. repeating would kind of be like that, minus 2.53. It's that number of hours difference, and there's 60 minutes per hour. So it's a difference of about 8.2 minutes overall. Okay, so not very much between the zero endpoint and the root three critical point. So that means she should land the boat root three miles down from the point nearest the boat. From the point nearest the boat. Okay, so if we look up here, <coughs> you see where the point nearest the boat is? The x should be root 3 miles. Right? Which is 1.73, right?
Okay, so there's number two, everybody. All right, let's do number three. Given the function f of x equals negative 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 3, answer the following by using the properties of derivatives. In other words, don't use your graphing calculator. Find the exact intervals where this function is increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, and all of that stuff. Okay. So increasing and decreasing come from the first derivative. So if we were to find the first derivative, we would get negative 6x squared plus 12x. And we want to find the critical points. That's where the derivative equals 0 or does not exist. Now, this quadratic function exists everywhere, so the critical points will just be where it equals 0. Let's divide out negative 6 and x, and we'd be left with x minus 2. And so we will get critical points at x equals 0 and x equals 2. These are the CPs. Okay, and we're going to do a comparison between f prime and the original function f. So f prime equals 0 at these two spots, and f prime is a negative quadratic. So a negative parabola like this. Okay, and so we can see that those f prime values are below the x-axis for this interval, so those are negative y values positive f prime values and negative f prime values, which means, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Here's what I want to do. Negative, positive, negative, which means that the original function is decreasing, increasing, and decreasing. So where is f Where's the function increasing in the 0 to 2 interval? And decreasing from negative infinity to 0. to infinity. Okay, and so we go decreasing and then increasing. This critical point is going to be a local min, or possibly absolute. Uh, but no, the thing is a cubic, so no, that's going to be a local min. This one, we're increasing and then decreasing, so that one will be a local max. And we'll come back to that. We need that in letter E, it looks like. Okay. Part C and D, concave up and concave down, that comes from the second derivative. The second derivative is equal to negative 12x plus 12. That exists everywhere. So we'll set it equal to 0 to get the inflection points. f double prime is equal to 0 at x equals 1. f double prime is a negative sloped straight line. So it would look like this. Okay, so the f double prime values are positive here and negative here. Which means for the original function, it's concave up here and concave down there. So we are concave up from negative infinity to 1. And we are concave down from 1 to infinity.
Okay, part E. Find any local extreme values and state whether they are maximums or minimums. In case we have a local min at zero and a local max at two. The x is zero, we can get the y. The local max was at two. And to get the y value, we have to plug those x values into the original f of x, which is negative 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 3. So if I were to put 0 in for x, it looks like I would get negative 3. So local min at 0, negative 3. <coughs> and if I put 2 in for x, we get a y value of 5. And finally, uh, letter F, find any inflection points. Inflection points are where concavity switches. That's at x equals 1. Okay, and to get the y value, of course, plug 1 into here. and We would get negative 2 plus 6 is 4 minus 3 is also 1, so 1, 1 is the inflection point. Okay, and it doesn't ask us to do this, but the graph would look something like this. 0, negative 3 is a local min. Two five is a local max. At one one we get a concavity switch from positive to negative. We are decreasing from negative infinity to zero. Increasing from zero to two with a concavity switch at one one and then decreasing from 2 to infinity. So that's very roughly what the graph should look like, negative cubic, which makes sense. And if we graph this, negative 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 3. And look at that. Perfect. All right, number four. Given the following graph, y equals f of x, and then it asks you some questions, but it doesn't have the graph on here. Um, I'll try to make sure the graph is there for you for the test. The graph looks like this. Okay, so there's the graph, and it says list the coordinates of the local extreme values and tell whether they are maximums or minimums. Okay, so this is a local min. And that is 1, 2, negative 3, and negative 3. And this is a local max. 
and that's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, okay. No absolute max, no absolute min, but they were just asking for locals anyway. For what values is f prime of x greater than zero? So positive slopes. Okay. Um, so where is the original function? Because it's y equals f of x. Where is f of x increasing? Basically, is what that's asking positive slopes. So we've got negative slopes here. Hey, positive slopes there and then negative. So f prime of x is greater than zero. For that inside interval from this x value to this x value. So from negative three to positive four. And for what values is f prime of x less than 0? Where is f of x decreasing? Hey everyone, I'm back. I had to just pause there for a second. My son had hurt himself. Okay, uh, for what values is f prime of x less than zero? So where is f decreasing? So on this side here, so from negative infinity to this x value, and then from this x value to positive infinity. So negative infinity to negative three. or from 4 to infinity. <coughs> okay, and that is quiz 4, everybody. And I will also send you the test, and you can do the test open book, and then take pictures of it and send it back to me, and that would be great, and then we will get into integration. All right, everybody, I will talk to you soon.